Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Orogiri. And I know I'm late on this topic. <laughs> I haven't uh, I haven't really uh, done much of the part two of um, the update we have. Like with the Onigiri, I've been doing like the Mikami thing every day. Like I got my frozen hell mag. And then once I got the frozen hell mag, I just like, okay, I need a, I, I need a break. Because you have to do it every day and just tedious at times. So, um, for those, most of you know that I think a week or, I think it was last Thursday? It wasn't this Thursday, I think it was last Thursday, last Friday. Uh, they added the mini update, which added... Um, a sublime young Koropon that has the damage boost Oogies and also has a bunch of sublimes. So it's a 16 Oogie lineup, so to me that's a huge skip. Um, so that was added. Um, and they also added the... I think there's another young Koropon they added. They added two, maybe. The Oogie one and the Magatama one. It has Glacial Frost Magatama and Hurricane Magatama. Hey, Rocky, how you doing? Uh, this one comes with Elegant Satin. Is Elegant Satin Borneal? Yeah, Refined Borneal and Elegant Satin. Um, those are good for the ornamentation that gets you cooldown reduction, but I don't think it's worth rolling on a 16 lineup thing just to get them. Now, mind you, if you're just breaking down the mags, it's literally a 50-50 chance if you get them, but I don't think it's a must. Uh, I would just use Druma Points if I were you. I wouldn't waste your time trying to get these mags just for ornamentation. Uh, the other thing they added was the Oogie uh, Neon Kropan. It's 16 Oogies, so a bunch of Sublimes. Uh, Verdant Storm, Lightning Slash, Static Axe, Glistening Snow, Crag Thrust, Water Cannon, Arrow Flock, and Chase Blister. I actually like a lot of these Sublimes. I really like Chase Blister Sublime. Arrow Flock Sublime is really good. Uh, Water Cannon Sublime is really awesome. It pushes the enemy. Static Axe is amazing if you cancel it. Glistening Snow is a really, really high freeze chance. Eight hits. And I don't know much about Void Lightning Slash, but Verdant Storm Sublime is pretty fun. It's not the best move, but it's like this. It, it turns Verdant Storm into something decent. It's all right. And then at the bottom, you have the damage bonus Oogies, which if you've never gotten these before, uh, they are the better of the two. These are the ones that will increase your damage by anywhere from, I believe, 4 million to 5 million? I'm not sure if you can actually read what it, if it tells you how much it is. No, it, it just says it imparts a buff that breaks the damage limit for 20 seconds. 20 seconds is actually quite long. Um, if memory serves right, Rosary Strike and Sword are 4.5 million. Um... Calamitous Cannon and the Bow might be 4 million. Um, bow is the lowest at 2.5. Yeah, okay, so Bow is 2.5. And Axe and Odachi. Axe and Odachi are 7 million. That's World Cleaver and Heaven Firefall. I thought they were both World Cleaver. I thought they were both called World Cleaver. Heaven? I, know, I don't remember it being called Heaven Firefall. Okay. Mm. Uh, Swirling Torrent. I got that one for Spear. It's 5 million. You got the wand one? Okay. So I think Sword and Staff are 4.5 million. Odachi and Axe are 7 million. Spear was 5 million. Uh, Frozen Thorn. I think, that, like you're saying, 4.5 million. Twins probably also 4.5 million. And then Wand is probably 5 million to pair with... Um, spear i'm pretty sure that's the breakdown generally the most desirable ones are axe or odachi one or the other and then staff because people use staffs all the time so it's not inconveniencing you to have it on your kit so that's all they added for that um so if you have any ltds or sp tickets or whatever um now's the time to use them i used them on i think the ugi non i got nothing so that is what it is okay uh, it's actually a really, really huge update. There's actually so much going on here. Like, right now you have Chocolates, you have Shining Sakura, you have the Mikami event, and then they added the Izo, I think his name is Izo, the Izo event, which is the continuation of the event we had, like, for the first three months of the year. Um, 
Why are you trying to get water cannon? Dang. I use it a lot. I like the water cannon. It's it's nice. It can actually push enemies, which gives it utility on... For me, I use a bow to charge sometimes. So having the ability to push my opponent away um, has has some nice, uh, nice utility on it. Um, I think if I go to system, I can see information. Okay. Yeah, Ugino Kuropon, Megatron Kuropon. Okada Izo, that's his name. So this is a new LTD dungeon that you guys are probably a little familiar with by now. Um, Okada Izo, we fought him during the last event. He summons all these different weapons, and then he gains immunities to certain weapons, depending on the phases he's in. Like, in his original event, he was never immune to anything outright. He just extremely resisted it. However, this time, depending on what balls and lights he has showing on the gate behind him, he is going to be immune, straight up immune, to certain elements and certain weapon types. That includes Vanguard weapon types. So, he's quite the bitch to fight by yourself. You'd have to go in with multiple different weapons to be able to fight him properly and you can't just, like, wear, let's say, all knowledge mags and go in with Dark, because if he's immune to Dark, you're, you're kind of screwed, unless you're in Vanguard. Um, you got a Shura recipe and the 138 wa wind? That's pretty cool. So, yeah, he's, from what I hear, he's a really big pain to fight. Uh, me, personally, um... You can probably tell that, because I haven't really talked about it at all, that I I do not have a big desire for his weapon. Um, I know a couple weeks ago, people were showing me what it was on PC, and I kind of saw, like, the picture, like, the stats of, like, what the 138... Because what this guy has is he has a 138, like, ultimate weapon, which is the highest level weapon in the entire game. And there's also a 131 weapon that they added on top of the three other weapons we had from the event. So now there's like a, it's five stages. So to me, this is the super duper nadir, like absolutely super nadir. So that's the, the Ezo warding. So to say a bit more about that. So right now you can fight Ezo every single day of this event. It's a lot like when Darkfin first appeared, we were able to fight Darkfin every single day of his debut event and get like your recipes really easily. And then after he left, it just changed to an LTD on, I think, Thursdays or Wednesday or Saturday, Fridays. I don't know what day it was, but because the days changed at one point because of us merging. But Darkfin became like a once a week thing or if we had an event that had him every single day. So Ezo is not a perk. Um, it's not a perk. He's, he's more akin to an LTD dungeon than anything. So... Uh, after this event is done, I believe this coming Thursday slash Friday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ezo is going to be uh, reg like delegated or reduced to only appearing a couple times in the week. And he's actually more common than like Ignis, Darkfin, Forest of Chaos, all those things, because he's going to show up three times in the week on the best days possible. Um, so his days of appearance are going to be Wednesday in the middle of the week, Saturday, and Sunday. So you get three days to fight him a week. So it's three times more likely to have chances to fight him um, going forward past this event. The only difference is right now his hell run is 40 energy, whereas after this point it's going to be 60 energy a run and limited to three times a week. I don't know how many times we'll be able to fight him over and over during the day. Well, that's yet to be seen. Um, this weapon as a whole is, like I said, it's very Nadir-esque. In the fact that it's very convoluted, it takes a lot of drops, a lot of weapon farming. Because, um, you know, you, with the Nadir, you had to make your, you, you got your Mephi weapons, then you got your vows, then you got your completions, then you had to take completions, make warps, then you had to make your take like three warps and make a nadir. This is very, very much akin to that, except it's like you have to make five Shura weapons, I think. Like I think you have to make five of the 131s. It's it's pretty crazy. Uh I had seen a, a list of what it took um, the other day. Let me see this here. 
Right. So I don't have these weapon recipes at all. Uh, I don't. I have not fought Shura in this event. My friends were fighting him one day. I was in chat and they told me that they said, Oro, do not stream Shura or whatever his name is. I, I said Shura is the weapon, but Izo, do not stream Izo because you're going to crash. Like my friends were saying that they were crashing two to three times a run. And that was on a fresh load every time, all of them on PS5s. Like, it's giving me flashbacks to the first time I tried to do Force of Chaos on PS4, and we all crashed. And we couldn't rejoin the dungeon back then. So I said, I'm not doing this until it gets better uh, for Force of Chaos. But will I do it? I might fight them once or twice. Um, as it stands, I'm going to talk about what the weapon does. I personally think the 138 weapon for Izo is the most out of touch anti-meta weapon in the entire game. And I don't mean anti-meta as like a different way to play. I mean literally it goes against the way we play Onigiri. Like I remember reading its description. I'm like, okay, this is kind of good. This is kind of all right. And then I got to the final form and I was like, oh... Oh God, I, I, I don't like this. And I've, and I've asked players, I've asked high level players. I said, how do you feel about not having a staff? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, this weapon wants you to have four of the same weapon, which is like 2015 Onigiri because we didn't know what meditation was. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. That means if you're like, I think this weapon's great for staff players. They can first aid, they can do whatever they want. It doesn't change anything for them. But if you're someone who fills up with a bow, this weapon sucks. If you're somebody that uses first aid to fill up with Vanguard, this weapon sucks. If you're somebody that meditation meditates themselves, rapid storms themselves, heals themselves with first aid, doesn't just use one weapon type, this weapon sucks. <laughs> but anyway, the weapon is really cool in its design, but I feel like they tried to do too much that it kind of lost its point of accuracy or its point of usefulness. So, just to read out what it does, I think it's on here somewhere. Yeah, so the Shura weapon, the 131 version, I wish this was a, the effect of the 138. I really do. So the 138 Shura weapon, what it does, I'll read this out to you. It increases your damage limit by a whopping 200,000 damage, which is the equivalent of having two blaze mags. That's really good. Um, if you're level 135 or more, it'll further increase your damage limit by 100k, which is 1% of damage cap. Um, it also gives you rank for uh, skill force plus 50%. And then this is, I'm reading the sword recipe, so I'm going to read sword. Um, so it says, if sword equipped, rank 4 skill force plus 20 skill force. If, 30, if three swords equipped, you gain another 30% skill force. It gives you 3k attack just for holding it. So if you don't have... like, And it just says three. Like, I like how the sure is worded. Then it says if you have two swords equipped, you gain 5% attack. If you have three swords equipped, you gain 15% attack. And then you have 30 sword affinity. If two swords are equipped, then you gain another 10% affinity... If three swords are equipped, you get another 20% affinity. So 30% affinity, 20% attack. It's looking really, really good. Actually, the 131. 15% uh, attack speed, or 15 increased attack speed. Five, five increased the crit rate. 10 cooldown cut. Cooldown on weapons is really good, because when you get a weapon 2 plus 100, you get another 10 cooldown on it, I believe. You do get some form of crit and cooldown, so that's really nice. Um, so that could be a lot. And then it gives you 90 slice, but if you're a spear or bow, it'd be pierce. If you're a wand or staff, it'd, it'd be impact. Uh, so 90. And then it makes it so your weapon loss is 20% more susceptible, so your weapon breaks 20% faster, which isn't that bad. Then it says if you have three of the same weapon type equipped, it's negative 15 SP recovery. Uh, movement speed minus three. I don't know why they did that. And then it gives you negative 100 to another level. So looking at this, the 131 to me is actually not bad. It's a not bad weapon. But what's it lacking? It gives you a lot of attack, percentage, it gives you 3,000 attack just for holding it. 
gives you a bunch of skill, forward buff, skill force buffs, gives you a lot of affinity buffs, gives you crit, cooldown, and a physical element. So this weapon does not have any elemental elements, as it were. Like no fire, ice, wind, water, whatever. It's just physical element. Now, if this weapon would have been a physical damage multiplier weapon, that would have been really, really cool, because we don't really have that at all. We don't we don't have that as an effect. Um, so for a lot of people, they're going to look at it and be like, it's a, probably a really good Vanguard swap weapon, because the last weapon, the 128s, I think they are, uh, they are very high in attack. They were really impressive in their attack form. So that's really cool. Like three weapon requirement, that's fine. That's how I play the game. That's how a lot of people play the game. It's pretty cool. But it what it lacks with modern weapons is there's no damage multiplier. Um, the damage limit is honestly a joke. Um, it, damage limit only matters, only ever matters if you're hitting damage cap, which is one short of 10 million damage. And if you tell me that by having this weapon and you level four levels higher than its minimum requirement to 135, you can do an extra 300k damage, that's that's pennies. That's that's literal pennies. Like a dark fin yeah, it's a great lunge dev weapon. That's a great point. Exactly. That's a great a great way to say it. Um, like, yeah, it does have really really high physical element. It doesn't have any multipliers, but but the 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 damage limit increase is 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 minuscule. It's it's non-existent in my eyes. It's like like I, I make this example all the time. You go to a store and they have a promotion. And they say, hey. If, if you spend $10, not $9.99, $10 or more, we will give you 30 cents. Exactly. You're, you're absolutely right, Osti. Damage limit only really matters in the millions. But one million's not enough. One million, it's, 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 it's like, are you going to change your build for one million damage? No, fuck you. I'm not. But the weapon, like this is the 131 we're talking about, and it has a damage limit increase if you're 135 of 300k. The Dark Fin, and I'm bringing up the Dark Fin because it's the most reputable weapon in the past like three, four years. Absolutely. Well, tattoos, you're, you're almost right. Steel attack's good. Now, the 138 would be a really good steel attack because it's really good. But I think the Dullahan is actually the best steel attack weapon in the game. A Dullahan 133, if you landed both damage multipliers on it, you're doing... You could have potentially a 6 million damage steel attack. Because if you have enough dark and enough lightning on a weapon and you use steel attack on it, and you trigger the bonus damage on that thing, you're fucking laughing. Because <laughs> it'll just add 3 million damage. If you land it... That's a three to six million damage steel attack. Um, the chocolate, chocolate in this event should end this Thursday or Friday. So yeah, like you, someone could make this as a really powerful steel attack, which is you know you could do that or get a vanguard and get the shopping outfit. But you know what I mean. Like I'm I'm honestly not too impressed by this weapon at all. Um, like my desire to get this is very 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 low. But the 131, it's cool. It has this two-weapon, three-weapon requirement. That's literally understanding the meta and not being out of touch. Now, I don't like to say understanding the meta in the sense of, oh, the developers don't like how we do this. They're going to do something different. No, like, I, I don't mean it in a, tradi a traditional meta sense of, like, many other games. Like, Onigiri has very, very, very light, concepts of meta like you could say meta is three reduxes and a small mag meta for onigiri is pretty much you wear three skill force mags or two big skill force mags and then a little mag and then another mag you are correct the bonuses do not carry over to vanguard so uh the only thing that carries over to a vanguard is your max attack 
while holding the weapon minus effects on the weapon. So affinity given to like everything that transfers to the Vanguard is your weapon affinity plus the weapon's attack minus all of the effects on the weapon. So all the smelting bonuses on the weapon, like the, the 10 critical, the defense, the whatever you want, HP recovery, all that stuff doesn't matter. The damage multipliers on a weapon, it doesn't matter. Um, like when you Vanguard swap, the only thing that matters is base attack, your affinity given to you by your accessories and your overall build, and then the effects of your Magatamas. Weapon effects do not transfer. But if you have a really high base attack on a weapon, then it is the best weapon to Vanguard swap with. So, like, this weapon, whatever its base attack is, if its base attack is really, really high and you want to make one just a Vanguard swap with, by all means, go for it. Um, I haven't seen that, per me personally, I have not considered, oh, I need a Vanguard swap weapon ever I, I never really cared i wasn't just gonna hold this like other side axe around just to swap with it i never really cared about it i'm like i'll swap with my vanguard and i'll hit damage cap anyway because i know what i'm doing because my build is is good you know now if there was a weapon that was literally hey this weapon is like 20k attack base okay i'll i'll, I'll, I'll vanguard swap with that sure if it's 20k base attack like something some bullshit some crazy thing now, I'm pretty sure Axe is probably a 20k base attack back in the day, before they started getting nerfed. But, like, I don't know how much of a substantial difference it makes. Because when I use, like, Honda, when I use KG, I'm hitting caps anyway. Like, the Vanguard swap, it, it doesn't appeal to me. It's, it's not worth chasing in, unless it really 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 makes a difference um you know what i mean so okay so moving forward i need to talk about the 138 weapon so this is a really 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 cool design for the dimension tear weapons this is the 138 version of the weapons and i'm going to read off what they do so these weapons actually um, they come in eight different colors. So they come in all the elements minus the physicals and flight. So when, when, or if you ever make a 138, you have to choose which one you want. Um, so you could choose to get a fire weapon, a water, a fire, rain, lightning, wind, ice, dark, holy, or mountain. You can choose any of the eight elements and the weapon is going to gain a damage multiplier of 3 million, which is the same as a Dullahan, for that element. Which is pretty good. It's very good. And then it says it will increase your damage limit by 200k just for having it. And then if you're level 140, like... Oh, like... 0.01% of the Onigiri population, you will gain a bonus of another 200k. Uh, yes, there are eight different recipes, and you choose the one you want to make. Correct. Like, you don't just make one and you identify it's random. You choose. So there's eight different recipes you have to get from him that are the 138s. So you basically... It's a, I think it's you have a 1 at a 64% chance of getting the weapon and element you want. And I think these might be tradable, but don't quote me on that. Uh, so it's a 1 at a 64% odds of getting the one you want. Because you have 8 different weapon types, right? You have sword, odachi, axe, wand, twin, spear, bow, staff. You have all 8 of them. So when you get a recipe, you ha it can either be one of the eight weapon types, and then on top of the one of eight weapon types, um, you have to hope you get your weapon type on top of um, the element you want. So like if you wanted to make this for... like I, I was asked like if I had to make one, what one would I make? I'd make a rain spear, because a rain spear with three million damage 
would be really good. Damage multiplier. That'd be really good. It'd be really nice. But the chance of getting that is I have to find a spear and then I have to find the spear water. Not the spear ice, not the spear wind, not the spear holy, etc, etc, etc. So it's really, 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 really hard to find the one you want unless you settle for whatever you get. And in my opinion, I don't think anyone should make this weapon for dark. I feel like that is a fool's errand. Like the Dullahan, in my opinion, would be better for dark because it's a Dullahan. It has two damage multipliers. It's easier to make. Comes with a special oogie. And it's already proven its worth. Um, it should have been one weapon with all the elements. Yeah, for all the bullshit it goes through. Yeah. Or, or, now, I'm not going to say we should take away choice because the, us having the choice and putting in the time to farm it, you can get whatever you want. Don't let me scare you away from that. Now, what they could have done was what they did when they made the 105s. They could have made it so the sword was fire and the odachi was wind and the spear was thunder and the axe was mountain and the bow was water and the wand was dark and the staff was holy and the twin was ice you know they could have done that same route and said oh each one is matching its stuff ha 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 ha, ha. you gotta eat the full bag of skittles yeah exactly you you're, you're eating skittles looking for the one skittle that may or not be there may or may not be there so anyway i'm going to continue reading it off so this weapon comes in every different element and like rocky said whatever element you pick it's a 60 percent chance to trigger a bonus damage of 3 million damage which is really good and by the way bonus damage bypasses damage limit it's an additional set of damage so like when you like that's this is the difference between damage limit and bonus damage so if you did gargoyle flame lance and gargoyle flame lance hits 9999999999 damage cap that's its base damage when you hit if you do it and the numbers are yellow you critical that means the value was multiplied by your crit rate and it triggered and multiplied by your crit damage rate but it doesn't matter if your base was 99999 and you crit for three times damage because you have 200% crit rate or 300% crit force it's still going to do 9999 because the damage cap so if your weapon has a damage bonus limit let's say you use this weapon and you got it to trigger on your lance you're going to see a number of i believe 13 or would it be 13? No, because you had one. It would be 12, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 because it's, uh, you added 3 million damage to 9.9 .9 million damage. So you would add 3 million damage, essentially. So you'd have your base plus your add. And then if you had a damage limit increase of, in this case, 400k, uh, your lance could now hit um, 10 million three hundred thousand nine 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 eight damage essentially which is very 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 marginal because it would take three of those to equate to an extra million or three and a half uh, attacks to equate to another million damage and in that time you've already done 40 million damage and you're going to get an extra one million damage on top of that 40 million damage that'd be like me giving you a one dollar bill after you just made like 40 bucks and in that case Pete, no one's gonna say no they're like yeah give me the give it to me give it to me. <laughs> like sure i'll take the dollar fuck you but it's it's very 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 minuscule in compared to how much work goes into it Okay, so continuing with the weapon recipe or what it does, okay? I don't, I'm not, I don't even want to read this recipe because it's, it's, it's a little horrible. It's, it's, it's very daunting. Okay, so 3 million bonus damage is 60% rate to any element you build the weapon for. Increases the damage limit by 200k. If you're level 140 or more, increases the damage limit by another 200k. Here's where it gets bullshit. If four of the same weapon are equipped, and it has to be the same weapon as this weapon... So, in this case, we'll say swords. If four swords are equipped, your damage limit increases by 500k. So, that means if you're 140 
and you're holding four swords, that means you're you can now hit an extra 900k damage, almost an extra million damage. That's nice. Um, I, I don't think that's very nice. Um, then you'll get rank five uh, skill force fifty percent, and then it says um, if three swords are equipped, uh, rank four sword skill force increased by twenty percent. Then it says if four weapon four swords are equipped, then you get another forty skill force. So if you have four of the same weapon, you're going to gain um, about one hundred and ten skill force, which is quite a lot. Fifty plus twenty is 70 plus 40 is 110 very good then it will give you a uh, 3000 attack just like its predecessor flat and then if three swords are equipped you gain 10 percent attack and then if four swords are equipped you gain 20 percent attack which would at, would be additive it's not one or the other you could gain 30 percent attack if you had four of the same weapon equipped but you only gain 10 percent attack if you only have three um then you get uh, weapon affinity 30%. If three swords are equipped, 10% sword affinity. If four swords are equipped, 30% sword affinity. Then you gain 15% or 15 attack speed. If four swords are equipped, you gain 10 attack speed. Uh, crit rate plus five. If four swords are equipped, you gain 10 crit rate. So if you had four swords, you get 15 crit rate. If you don't, you just get five. Uh, cooldown cut 15. Then you'll get 90 of the element you chose. So in this case, 90 fire. Um, then it gives you 130 physical elements, so either slice, pierce, or impact, depending on the weapon you make. So 130 physical, 90 elemental, and then it makes it so your weapon breaks 30% faster. And if you have four of the same weapon equipped, it takes so you get negative 20 SP recovery. So that means you, I don't, what the fuck is that? Negative 20 SP recovery? What the fuck does that mean? Is that punishing you for having four weapons equipped? Negative SP recovery, so you recover 20 less SP when it would naturally regen? It's fucked up. And then it gives you negative 130 to the opposite opposing element of what you've already made. So if you made a fire one, you get negative 130 rain. If you made a rain one, you get negative 130 fire. If you made a holy one, negative 130 dark. If you made a dark, negative 130 holy. Negative element caps out at negative 100 anyway, so it just makes sure you will not have that element. And then it gives you a negative 150 to your opposing physical weapon. It ain't a Leviathan weapon? No. No, it's not. Leviathan lowered your SP by 70%. This just lowers how much SP you naturally recover, which really sucks because... Seven out of eight times, you will not have meditation. You might have an assist. Now, here's the other thing. If they release an assist with an 80 medi, we could, this weapon would be okay. If we had an assist that would medi like the whole team for like 80 SP, this weapon would be fine. But it ain't fine. Um, yeah. So the base attack on the sword is 11,000 to 13,000, which is pretty good because I have that number here. Um, let me try and compare it with other swords. Now, mind you, I don't have any of the recipes. I don't. I don't see this as something I want to farm. Yeah, exactly, Genshin. It wants you to wear four. Well, you could wear four of this weapon. Yeah, I mean... You'd have one for four different elements. Yeah, you could. But do you have mags for all those elements? You're not going to make the same one. But generally, you don't have to wear four of the same weapon. It could just be four of the same weapon type. Thing is, this build is only good with Akane mags. Yeah, reduxes. Yeah. Ice, wind, fire. Yeah. Yeah. Very good observation, yeah. Of course, because they give you attack percent on top of it, right? Uh, production cost. Okay, I have a Dullahan. Okay. I think, no, Dullahan's not the strongest weapon. Metamorphosis is. Okay. So the Metamorphosis is attack. Metamorphosis? Yeah, whatever. Uh, is 11,093 to 12,204. 
and the Shura is coming in at 11,420 at the minimum and 13,173 at the maximum. So an extra uh, 900 attack, which is, you know, for a weapon eight levels higher than the Cursect, 900 doesn't seem like much, but I could be lowballing this. I really could. Because the corpse was... How do I have the corpse recipe? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the corpse was 10,170. And the metamorphosis is like a whole 2,000 higher. Like straight up. And then this one's 900 higher. So, I don't know what its base attack... I don't know how much that's going to affect the base attack. You might see like 15k. I don't know. Or 25k, 26, 27, 28k, 29k. Hey, uh, I think that's Divinity. Your name looks different. Uh, what are you missing out on because you refuse to... Refuse to something? Um... Let me get my uh, chat up because your whole comment was just, just was just destroyed. Shit, click on videos. Uh, yeah, view channel. Vertical live streaming is here. Okay, thanks YouTube. Yeah. Okay. You refuse to restart, Oni. Yeah, you mentioned something about having to restart or something. I think. Um, this update, we had chocolates. We had Mikami event. They're giving away frozen hell mag. Hidden helmets in an exchange shop. Um, chocolates for Daruma points. Whole bunch of stuff. Imagine if this is Oni copying the stellar terror type from Pokemon. I can't see it. Now... Now, now, if we wanted to copy the Stellar type from Pokemon in Onigiri, that would be so good, dude. It would literally just be reverse adaptive damage. Like, like, because the Stellar type doesn't give you every type. It, it's based on what moves you use, because I have a, I have a Stellar Magirna and Stellar Fezzendibity uh, in the game. Oh, your PS5 died. Oh, shit, no. You gotta get a new PS5. They're on sale right now. Um, but yeah, like the stellar type only factors in for using like different elemental moves. So like, if you wanted to have like a stellar type in Onigiri, like translating to it. So let's just pretend for a second my weapon is not all fire. So like, let's say this was Lance of Flames, Water Dragon, and then Thunder Dragon. And then Holy Dragon and then Dark Dragon. Like, I have five different Oogies on the weapon. If they made a Stellar type, it would be like when you use the first skill, whatever element that is, you gain a multiplier for that element. And then you have it until you use a new skill, and then after you use that skill, you gain a multiplier for that element. So I'd have, like, a Fire Multiplier, and that would last probably 30 seconds, and then it would switch to, like, a Water Multiplier, whatever, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. And give you bonus element for the 10 seconds after you use that skill. Um, that was going to get a PS5. Do you need to remember your login to Onigiri to play the PS5? Um, okay, so yes. So if you want to get a PS5 and you want to play Oni on it, uh, you have to be able to log into your PSN. So whatever your account is on PS4, you need to know your username and password for that. And when you get to the PS5, my cousin literally bought a PS5 last week, and I walked him through that. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, the skill would have to... It wouldn't renew itself until its time went away. There's a lot of skills that are like that anyway. Um, but that's just if you wanted to have Stellar type in, in Onigiri. That's kind of how it would work. Um, and it would probably have a cooldown. You're probably right. But yeah, so... With the PS5, PS4 to PS5 Onigiri, um, you get a PS5, you just take your same PSN account, log into it, 
and you'll be able to play Onigiri as long as you're under that account with your account character that you had in PS4. Very simple. <laughs> like, it's the same way that if you went to like a friend's house and you wanted to do your daily login for Onigiri, you could be like, hey man, can I can I sign into Oni on your on your PS4? You'd be like, okay. And you log into your account and you just blow it Oni and you you play it. That's it's the same, it's literally the exact same thing as PS5. Am I gonna give fighting him a shot for the stream? Um, probably not because I'll crash. Um I've been standing out here doing like sweet nothing for ten minutes. I don't know how long it's been, probably twenty five minutes now. I mean, probably half an hour, probably like three hours, given my track record. Um, I can't identify anything. That sucks. But yeah, like, I, I hear he's a whole slew of bullshit. Exactly, I'd, I'd crash anyway. You're right. But, like, so having having talked about the weapon and what it does and all that stuff, um, I, I personally have no desire to get this weapon. Um, I really don't. Um, like, I want to say a lot of my constituents, but literally a bunch of my friends, they farmed it for a couple days dealt with the laggy bullshit the dcing the having to rely on other people to hit them because you're using different weapons and you can't hit them like all this bullshit like you have to like switch vanguards and stuff like it's from what i can tell people are not head over heels for this weapon i personally feel like it's the most out of touch weapon they've made since the abyss and the Abyss isn't, the Abyss Perg isn't even out of touch. It's just bad. It was just weaker than existing options and costed like $1,500, $2,000. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the point of that is at all. This weapon requires you to make five Shuras, which then in turn, yeah, yeah, they made, in my opinion, the weapon is bad but objectively speaking the weapon is objectively speaking the weapon is strong it's very strong but the restrictions it needlessly puts on the player are unwarranted that's how i feel about it like yeah, you could make the 138 and use three weapons, and you'll get, like, half the bonuses on the weapon. But you'll kind of feel cheated. It's like, yeah, you, you have a cool weapon with a cool aura, and it, it does stuff. Like, that's cool. That's fine. But it won't you won't reach its full potential. And to reach half of its full potential, you have to be 140, which kind of sucks. You're trying to find the Shibuki event? Oh, Shikibu. Yeah, so someone said that. So next event, uh, PC has it already. It's uh, Murasaki Shikibu's coming back. And I think they're kind of like reduxing that event. So that's the event with the manga market. And you fight the um, demon fox lady that can one-shot you if you're not paying attention. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to run away from her big detonation circle. It's the event that debuted Riku and... Um, Riku and Sugumo and Shikibu. It's that event. Um, but they're also going to be adding a new Magatama. Um, I don't know what it takes to make the mag, but I have seen it. I can talk about it if you'd like. It's actually one of the first things to ever take Kaguya drops. So if you've been saving your eye patches, raiment tatters, and lunar spirit seals, um, you'll be good. Uh, so the new Magatama is arguably better than Izo's weapon, but it's a Magatama, and I'm I'm somewhat a fan of this weapon or this Magatama. So this is called the Lucent. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, the event should have light, uh, holy, and fire knowledges as well, so that's a big W. Um, so this new mag, it's a level... I don't know what it, I don't know what level it is. It could be 130, because the minimum levels over overlapping, like the words always overlap. I don't know what level it is for the weapon for the mag. Could be 126, could be 130. That I do not know. It's the Lucent Shimmering Magatama. Um, it's 47 chakra and has three ornamentation slots, which is giving you me big uh, Frozen Hell vibes. Yeah, it, it's such a minor thing, but like when you don't know, it is annoying for sure, Selba. So what this does, three limitation slots, 45 chakra. That means you could do like triple faded, triple lion skull, and that puts you at, um, to add six, puts you at 53 chakra on one mag, which is still two less than a tempest, which is very, 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 very flexible, very doable. Um, so basically what this says, it says a lot. So bear with me. <laughs> Okay, Lucent Shimmering Magatama. Uh, so this mag. Uh, if your holy element is 230 or more, you gain 10% attack. Yay! That's the same attack that a Redux gives you. Very good. Um, attack percent, anyway. Uh, then it gives you rank 5 skill force 150%, which I believe is the same as the Redux. The Redux also gives you 150% skill force. Pretty sure. Then it gives you, if your HP is 80% or more, then you get another 20 skill force. So 170 skill force if your HP is higher than 80%. But then it's like the other side where it has an inverse effect. So anything I say that says over 80 will also have an under 20% threshold, just like another side. So if you're over 80%, you get another 20% skill force. If you're under 20% health, if you're really low health, then you get that 20% skill force as well. But if you're somewhere in the middle, you do not get it. Okay, then it gives you SP recovery 20%. So whenever your SP naturally regenerates, you will receive 20% more. So for example, if every time your SP reaches its natural SP recovery rate and you gain 100 SP, you will now gain 120 SP. If it's 400 SP, you'll gain 480 SP. Very, very, very simple. Simple is good. Uh, then if your HP is 80% or more, you gain another 20% SP recovery. So your natural SP will now be 140 instead of 100. And then the same thing goes if you're really low health, the same effect applies, another 20%. Um, your physical attack speed increases by 15. 15. Um, if your HP is 80% or higher or 20% or lower, you gain 5% or 5 attack speed. It gives you 15 cooldown cut. Again, 80% higher or 20% lower, you gain another 5 cooldown. Um, SP reduction 15, which is very good. We haven't seen SP reduction since like CLO, and that's really, really good. This lowers the amount of SP your skills take either by a hard 15 or a whole 15%. That I'm not sure, but it doesn't say percent, so I think it just takes 15 off the cost of all your skills, which can add up and really help in modes like Oni mode. Um, and then if your HP is over 80, under 20, you get another 5 SP reduction. Um, then it states, if your holy element is 230 or more, then you get another 5 SP reduction. So 25 altogether. Then if your holy element is 230 or more, you get a 25% chance of adding 100% of damage dealt as holy damage. You have a 25% a chance of adding 100% of damage dealt as holy damage. Damage limit is 300k. Okay, so you have a 25, if you're, if you have 200, this word is so weird. So if your holy element is 230 or more, you have a 25% chance of dealing an additional bonus damage of 300k. Okay, thanks. Then it gives you a critical force of 20, 70 holy, negative 70 dark, 20 flight element, plus 50 slice element. And these mags are divided by weapon types as well. So the skill force it gives you is just for one weapon type. Um, so... If, you, if you're using spears, make the spear one. If you're making sword, make the sword one. 
Yeah, it's 300k bonus damage. So 300k bonus damage is about less than half of what a dark fin is for bonus damage. Uh, 300k is not that crazy. However, this is on a Magatama, so this transfers to the Vanguard. So if you had three of these, you would get 900k bonus damage on your Vanguard, which is like using a dark fin, but better. So if you wore three of them, yeah, you'd be a holy god and um, you could do some bonus damage. Right, mag stuff's really cool. Mag bonus damage is really cool. Then it gives you negative, so it gives you plus 50 to your favorable element. So in this case, it's the twin sword mag, so it gets 50 slice, they get negative 50 uh, uh, impact. And then weapon durability lost 70% or more, or 70% more susceptible. And then it lowers your total SP cost, your total SP pool by 20%. And then it also lowers your movement speed by 20. To me, that is the worst rotten little cherry they've put on this mag. That negative 20 movement speed. Bringing back Wadatsumis after 10 years is quite the throwback. But that's like bringing back the fucking plague. <laughs> if you know what I mean like overall the mag's really 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 good but then at the end they take away 20% of your total SP pool and they take away uh, your movement speed however a player could use rapid storm and fix this now if you had three of this mag which would be quite extreme um, you would be down 60 movement speed like fuck <laughs> like straight up rapid storm would give you 20 movement speed um if you had one of this mag you could just drink moon king whenever you want and it will circumvent its effects um it's really good if you use a mount to move around for everything but lately they've not let us use mounts in any place that have events so that kind of sucks um however if you have makami accessories you gain movement speed iframes and sitting still is enough i guess but I think it affects lunge step damage too. I'm not entirely sure. Um, overall, I would say this mag is a 7.5 out of 10. Um, it's very good. Except for the movement speed thing. The negative SP kind of sucks, but with the SP reduction riddled throughout the mag, it kind of balances itself out, sort of. Like if you wore three of these, and you normally have 3k SP, you're down to 15k SP. If you wore three of them, like you're probably closer to like um, 16 or something. This event, this mag is going to be available in the next event we get on Thursday. The Redux of the Murakami uh, Shikibu, Murasaki Shikibu event that happens in Kyoto. <laughs> um, so yeah, this mag's going to be available there. I'm more excited for this than than Izo. I, I really don't care for the weapon. Um, like, I think a lot of my friends were just fighting it for the sake of fighting it. Like, it was something to do, something to try. But lately, all my friends just haven't been doing it either. Um, so, I, I don't know what the rest of the players are doing about it. I don't know how much engagement it has. But, um, yeah. Uh, where I stand is I, I really don't want this weapon. Um, the mag seems pretty cool, though. Isn't there a high movement speed weapon? Pfft, yes. The other side weapons give you 10 movement speed. But beyond that, I don't think there's anything else. Like, there's some accessories that do give you movement speed. I think some of the Fuda Kotaro accessories give you movement speed. Like some accessories might give you uh, might give you excess movement speed. Uh, movement speed on mags, like I think there's just the Corona mag. Doesn't Abyss give you 20? You're asking the real questions. You're asking, you're asking me to look at a weapon I haven't touched in like five years. Damn the Abyss. Does it have movement speed? Fuck. Look at that beautiful little weapon. I have Icicle Punishment on my Abyss? Anyway. 
Uh, negative crit, crit force. Hmm. Two slice, fire, rain, ice, mountain, lightning, wind. Uh, there's 10 movement speed on it. The abyss has 10 movement speed. I don't think there's weapons that have more than 10. The Abyss has 10, and I think the other sides also have 10. Where is the other side? Oh, they're already fucking there. <laughs> I was looking at like 10 of them. Um, I should have movement speed on it somewhere. Oh, I gotta get my squint. Remember reflect damage? Remember when that, we thought that was cool? Uh, movement speed 5, and then if your HP is really high, you get another movement speed, I think. The other side gives you 15% attack, huh? 20% attack? If your HP is full, oh fuck that. Yeah, so 10 movement speed, rapid, moon king for dungeon, yeah. And then if you go into vanguard, like... They're going to be slow as balls, too. Because your weapon doesn't affect them. I identified a weapon I bought something. I didn't buy anything from her. Who do that? Yeah, the dungeon's been here for the past week and a half. Um, the weapons are okay if you like using four of the same weapon. If you don't, then it's not weapon for you. Uh... This, they also added this, and a lot of people didn't really notice it. I didn't either. I believe my friend Gentoku showed it to me. Um, but at the bottom of Moroku's uh, buying option, there is now the... Uh, I've, I preached this option years ago. I wanted to be able to buy mill chests so that I could convert my Ryu cap into uh, less. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I was telling them that you, you just got a PS5 last week because someone was asking um what's it like to um transfer your ps4 account to your ps5 and i said you you did it pretty easily you just got to know your password and your username your email account and you're pretty much good but yeah they finally added this quality of life so what this does is it lets you buy a 100 million ryu chest which is you know one tenth of the ryu we can have so 100 million. Basically, all this is for is so that if your Ryu is ever close to cap, you can buy one. And your Ryu goes from 99999, or it is at cap, to 899999. So you buy like five of them, and you're going to be at 500 million instead of, you know, one short of a billion. So basically, you finally have the way um, to um, reduce your... Ryu cap without just going smelting some random ass weapon. I think this is a really good step in the right direction. I just wish they would have had like the 10 million chest as well. Because sometimes, I don't know, 100 million seems kind of excessive. But it's still nice to see. It's still really nice to see. So I, have to, I do have to run one dungeon for my daily challenge. I don't really fight Mikami anymore, but I guess I could. Because I did the 50, and I, that used to be my routine, like, for the past, like, couple weeks. I would just log in, do Forest of Flowers, log off. But, but yeah, so the Ezo weapons, I'm not too much a big fan of them. Like, I, I, I really hope they get buffed in the future. Because they kind of created the Ezo weapons to appease to... Like one percent of the player base, and that one percent of the player base doesn't really like them. Like the Kursek weapon was, was and is AIDS to make. It is. It really sucks. It's nowhere near as bad as the Abyss, but its its output is actually worth it. It's actually worth having. The Kursek poison is unresisted. It does so much damage. Big bonus damage. Wind and poison. Very 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 good.
And then when you take that and then you give us the Ezo stuff, now mind you, it's not a perk. It's, to me, it's very lackluster. It's out of touch. And personally, I feel like I have no need for it. Now, if the weapon would have said, hey, whatever element you pick, you're going to get like 10 million damage limit, like you can do 20 million damage, and you get a 5 million bonus damage multiplier, it'd be worth it. It would be worth getting. That would absolutely be worth it. But with the baby numbers they're giving to it, it's not really... Um, I don't feel the, the attraction or the need for it. Yeah. Most of the time I just like log in, log out. And lately I've been playing like so many different games that I'm just logging. Like I do my Star Rail. I've been trying to log into Genshin, log into Don Machi, and then I do whatever else I want to do. Like they're just kind of like little things like little daily check-ins more or less but yeah like I haven't really talked about like the whole Ezo update the entirety of it being out and I don't know why I didn't I know I wasn't interested in it but I just never really I didn't even log in Honkai, oh yeah, Honkai's gonna take a lot of people's time next week, because Acheron's dropping for sure. I think Sparkle has a day and a half, and then she's out of there. We're gonna get our, like, 20 pulls over the next two weeks. I hate how they, they, they make you wait. Like, they give you all those summons, like, they're gonna give us, like, 20 free pulls, but you have to, it's gonna take, like, 10 days or 10 or 20 days to get them all, which is fine, I don't mind. But, like, a new event comes out, and you kind of want to, like, summon that day, you know? Because, like, when Black Swan came out, I completely forgot about the Gift of the Odyssey until after I summoned. Oh, my God. Last P. Really? There we go. But yeah, like, I, I feel like the Ezo weapon is under... It underperforms the expectation of what a 138 weapon should be. Like, to me, a 138 weapon or a weapon that has 140 bonuses... It should it should matter it should it should let you deal 20 mils on your own character like a weapon that powerful should rival what the vanguards of late are able to do that's how i feel anyway because it's like you get all these vanguards so that you can fight dungeons to make these weapons or to make these mags just to keep using the vanguards like it, it's kind of this hard philosophy to look at. So, like, when new weapons just aren't, you know, cutting it, it's kind of like, well, okay. But the Curse Act, that let you do... The Curse Act as a weapon... Yeah, yo, she made a weapon out of a 138. Yeah, exactly. It's just a blaze mag. I hate that Blaze Mag. Blaze Mag was out of touch as fuck too. Blaze Mag was like the most out of touch thing. And I feel like that is Oni's biggest problem is that they are out of touch. Most of the time. Like, if Oni actually did play their own game, they would know. Hey, Oro just clicked on Lance of Flame Sublime, and every hit did like somewhere between 7 to 9 million damage a tick. Like, do you know how many Blaze Mags I would have to equip to rival that one push button press? Like, how many Ezo weapons I'd have to stack on top of each other? Like, how many hits it would take 
to recreate one damage cap out of the six damage caps your skill does. Like, it's so minimal. Like, if they added, some, like, a zero to their bonus damage and their damage limit, it would be good, but they, they just cut it short. It's, like, it's, it's literally the equivalent of, hey, we're going to take away your cell phone's ability to put a headphone jack into it. And then, once you have your AirPods and you're used to it, and, you know, they fall out and you lose them and stuff, we're going to then release another item that lets you put your wireless headset with some wires on them to stay on your head. So it's like going full circle, but you're literally going up your own ass and then coming out your mouth. <laughs> hey, Luigi time. How you doing? Is this game worth getting into? Um, yeah, it's really, really fun. Game's been going on for 10 years. Um... 10 plus years um it's really got a diverse weapon set there's eight different weapons to play there's no class restriction you can do whatever you want pick up any weapon and you use it to the best of your ability um if you like swords spears magic big great swords axes uh twin blades and a pretty uh pretty decent gotcha compared to other games like this game was built with its base gameplay in mind first, and then they added the gotcha to it later. So it's not like uh, gotchas of most other games where you only play as the characters you pull. In this game, you have a base character, you build the character, you have your own gear, you can play as your own character. You don't even need to touch the gotcha, but if you do, you just get stronger stuff that scales off of what you're already doing. And it's, it's really fun. Like, if you like Dynasty Warrior dungeon crawler games and, you know, fighting stuff, dodging, um, timing your skill cooldowns, building your own perfect build for what you want to do, then Onigiri's great. And if you love Japanese culture, folklore, anime references, and just, you know, overall dungeon crawlery fun, uh, Onigiri's really, really worth checking out. Um... Yeah, I've been I've been playing it for to put it to put it in words like long as fuck, <laughs> but it's still really really fun. And no matter when you come to it, there's always something better to do. Yeah, thanks thanks for stopping by, thanks for checking it out. It's always nice to see a new face. So yeah, so TLDR. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. If if you don't if you don't like grinding. Um, then, uh, if you don't like grinding, then this game might not be the best. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, like I said, like TLDR, long and short of this, um, if you're somebody that likes using four of the same weapon, then this weapon's great for you. For me, I don't think it's worth it. I like having four weapons and a staff. I mean, I use my Revolt Spear and my Revolt Staff in tandem with each other. They work. Now, I know I can just change weapon sets at any point, but I, I like having a staff. I like being able to have two weapons, a staff, and a bow and getting bonuses from them. I don't... And like I just explained to Luigi Time, this game has no class restriction. This game lets you do whatever you want. And I feel like these weapons go against the grain for that in a bad way. Like... If they wanted, if they wanted this weapon to actually be, like, the weapon's good, it's just the restrictions on it are bullshit. Like, if they wanted people to actually go for the weapon. Right, staff, I, I already said this, staff is the best class, to, if you're a staff main, then it doesn't affect you in the slightest to get this weapon, because you're going to use four staffs anyway. Or three staffs and a bow, and you'll be like, yeah, whatever, I'll first aid. But... If they wanted to make the 138 version of this weapon better, or, yeah, literally, the 131 was have three weapons of the same type. If they would have made the 138 state on it, if you have, if it was, you know, if you had three of a weapon type, you get the low bonus, and if you have two of the weapon type, you get the big bonus, or two and then three whatever that would have been fine this weapon would have been like holy shit like if it would have been literally hey if you you have to wear at least two weapons 
to get the minor bonuses and three for the big bonuses, everyone would be like, holy fuck, there's a new weapon. It's coming out strong as fuck. Uh, I only, and you, it's very flexible. Uh, you're going to get all these bonuses and we don't have to change anything about our builds. Like this is really, really great. It kind of shows that Onigiri knows we use a staff. They know that we use lunch tap swords. They know we do this. And that's another part of it. If you're somebody that doesn't play sword, but you keep a lunch step sword on you because it's part of your gameplay. Like let's say you're somebody who uses a weapon, a lunch step sword, a bow to fill up and a staff or any combination of that. This weapon's not for you. This weapon stifles the flexibility of the game. But literally, and I hope Onigiri's listening, change the weapon to three for the minimum or two for the minimum and three for the maximum bonuses and you will have people getting it. Like, it's, you will get more flies with honey than vinegar. And right now, all I'm tasting is vinegar. So, that said, that's my take on this. I'm really looking forward to the next event coming. Uh, so please, by the end of this week, try to wrap up your events. I know it's tedious as hell, but this dog over here, or Fujin, like for people that don't remember, Raijin here, he has an exchange shop. It takes a lot of drops. And you have a chance to get hidden helmets from it. They're really good. Really rare. Yeah, more than likely they're not going to do anything about it. Because very, very... Well, it's a buff, right? It's not a nerf. Like, Onigiri doesn't like to nerf things, but they have buffed things in the past. Like, the Valkyrie accessory didn't used to have spear affinity on it, and then they put spear affinity on it. Um, like they don't really come out and talk about it, but I feel like if, if they notice a, a stark drop in how many people are doing his content or actually making his weapon, they might intervene in some way, but that's coming from the same developers that saw the abyss perg was being run, but was not being made. There are probably like less than 10 abyss perg weapons that have ever been made they buffed crafting weapons too did they how so like the gargs and the 105s well they reduxed the recipes they made them easier to craft yes that's happened that we need another one of those absolutely that's that's the next thing they did make things easier to make yep absolutely because they thought, well, let's lower the bar of entry so that new players can make these weapons a lot easier. Like, you can come in, run, like, two or three runs of each Garg, and you can have a Garg 115. Like, that's that's very fair. But they, they need to do that to more stuff. Yes, they did buff the Horse Dungeon, but that was indirectly. So, the Horse Dungeon buff was not done because they thought, oh, shit, uh, horses suck. No, Horse Dungeons were always easier and better on the JP server than they were on the North American or global server, if you want to call it that. But when we merged with JP, we got their rates for, or their version of the horse dungeon. And we started getting better drops, better rates, and you could start getting recipes really, really easy. Yeah, exactly. You, you can run hard and get fucking horseshoes. There's no reason to run horses on hell. There's zero. And let, the only reason you would do it is to get the hell recipe. And after that, you get the hell out of there. And you go. So, um, yeah. With that said, um, there's only, I think, four or five more days, four more days uh, left of this event. And then we move on to the Shikibu event Redux. So, um, you know, make sure you guys don't forget that there's like five exchange shops. There's Raijin's exchange shop there's the um three guys in kyoto bridge uh exchange shop and um what's her name kintoki idol also has an exchange shop in kumaso village so please like check them out and get some good drops from them while you can there's only a few days left of this event and if you really want to maximize your profits, go farm chocolates until you can fill all three of your storages with 999 chocolate. And that'll be Daruma points for like the next three months. And the same thing with the Shining, Sh Shining Sakura event. If you want to do that, all the drops in there all trade in for 10 points each and you can store up to eight of them. 
Back in the day, me and Lyra ran that shit so much that we had enough drops to last us for nine months. And now with the third storage, you could probably get enough drops to max out Daruma points for the rest of the year. If you wanted to max out chocolates, you wanted to max out that, you wanted to buy diamonds, whatever, uh, that is all there for you. I don't really think you should focus too much on Izo. Like I said, he's going to be available every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday going forward. So there'd be lots of time to farm that if it ever suits your fancy. That said, I'm going to get on out of here. I got some other stuff to do. My voice is getting dry. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for staying subscribed. Thanks for liking. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for being who you guys are. Thanks for playing. Thanks for spending. Thanks for being cool. And uh, thanks for getting out of bed in the morning. Good job, everybody. All right. I'll see you guys next time. And uh, have a good week.